guess than it is. Is it Rebecca Moore? Fry? Like Fry. Fry. Oh, like Moore Fry. Like Glenn. Yeah, so we're, we're actually related. You're related to Glenn Fry? Really? Yeah, wow. like distant cousins. Wow, that's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah, did you ever meet him? Almost, but no. I, I were at two Eagles concerts with um, out in California, and I wanted to meet him the second time I wore at the concert, and the production manager tried to make it happen, but um, the production assistant came back and actually said, so what if you're a relative? Oh, wow. Uh, well, that happened, doesn't huh? surprise me. It must How have been you? Don Henley, because I... The same yeah, person. They're scared, of, uh, they're scared of meeting anybody. Yeah, really well, know. I'll wow. tell you, the, one, the person I just mentioned that was the translator for uh, Celine Dion also was the translator for the Eagles. The translator. Wow. <laughs> she did everyone, and um, not like that. <laughs> and, uh, and, and she also said, though, she said that... Um, Glenn Fry was nice, but the nicest one was um, Joe Walsh. Joe Walsh. Well, Joe Walsh, that doesn't yeah. surprise me. And Don you know. Henley, she she's said, funny. Don Henley, no offense, Don Henley, but she said he was pretty much the meanest man she ever met, but the she most talented. Well, man he had she a lot of met. talent, but I so see just talent. from interviews that he's a real perfectionist. But we love person. you, Glenn Fry, and we love that you're a distant cousin. And, and it's pretty okay. cool why Rebecca Moore Fry is visiting us because <laughs> you wrote a really Incredible story. Yes. It's a great book. Yeah, yeah. Let's show it. I read excerpts on the internet. It's really very. Inspiring. I read like most of it. I like, um, I, it, and it's it's really common sense, but it's common sense that it sounds so easy, but it's so not easy. Right. Mm -hmm. It sounds like duh. Like why shouldn't we be doing all this? And we should be, but why don't we? Why are we our most like worst enemies? And we do everything like this to get to that, like kind of. Uh, I think there's a lot of reasons for that. One, I, my first chapter is about honesty. I think you gotta be honest with yourself to be happy. I truly believe that's like, there's no other way to really get to happiness is to be honest. It doesn't mean you don't do things wrong in your life, but you gotta like, you know, confess it just to yourself. And a lot of people are kind of in denial, and maybe they have a big ego about their embarrassment or something. About lying? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not just about lying. Being happy is also about being healthy, making choices, yes. uh, you know, that are good for you. And um, I think you need to renew your goals, too. I have some friends who are kind of, like, older and kind of floundering because they, they, did, they either did what they wanted to do or they gave up on it. Uh, and they're just kind of partying and doing nothing. And now you like, Yeah. So I think that's part of it, too. And, and I mean, you have to, like, experiment in yeah. life to get to the next whatever, but, like, to not find something passionate. Yeah. Is that part of it, too? Like, Definitely. Like, a lot of people are just, like... Art, we know it as artists. Well, we can't but, help it. It's almost exactly. like we try to give you it up. Actually. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's like, you, it we can't. You know? There's always some dangling carrot yeah. that always turns out. Right. 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 Like, pays better. Yeah, which is not easy to get. Do you know what I like about your story is that for every example that you cite, you always have, like, a, I mean, a personal a story, mm -hmm. you know, about your family, which I found very fascinating. Apparently, you had That's quite right. a lot of famous musicians yes. playing in your um, living room. So. Jimi Hendrix was one of them. Now, your mother was involved in music or something? Not my mother, my father. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't quite remember what your father did. He, was like a he really singer. just dabbled. He actually made a drum. He made some instruments. That's he, cool. he thought very highly of them. Well, Mike and the Mechanics lived at our house when I was growing up. Wow. Yeah, I like Mike and the Mechanics. Yeah. And, uh, he was, he was wait, wasn't seven. he from um, the Old Holland Band, Mike and the Mechanics? I'm not Genesis. sure. Yeah, he was Genesis. Yeah. yeah. He was like a, one yeah. of the guitar players. Yeah, not I know Joni Mitchell was. worked with him. Wow. Yeah, because yeah, we have the album that had her Another guitar genius. I love Joni Mitchell. Mitchell. Uh, yeah, so Pete Seeger and, jo and Jimmy Hendrix played in our living room. Do you remember it? Very, very well. Now, uh, like, was Jimmy, was Jimmy did Jimmy Hendrix play with you? Like, he asked me to dance. Oh. I danced in front of them till 2 in the morning. Oh. And it was with Chuck Berry and Buddy Miles. Chuck Berry rented our living room. Wow, well, so what was it? Like a recording studio or a rehearsal? Our house was a commune, but it was actually, it was all like. Where was it? Westport, Connecticut. Really? Wow. wow. A lot of people claim they didn't know it was there on the other side of the tracks. 
Ah, mm -hmm. but in the most most activity there, there, which is my my uh, my dark side thing. That yeah, the, mm -hmm. for the Topher Prize. Oh, you get it. You get it. <laughs> my father was a satanic cult uh, nice. leader. Really? But Jimmy was not involved. It was like all this stuff going on in the top of the house, and then in the sub basement with all this other crap. So like voodoo and seances and, and blood worshiping and. They really did stuff and like that? murder and everything. Really? Mm -hmm. It yeah. went on in your house? Yes, it did. So wait, when they would murder, was it people? Sometimes. Yeah. Animals? Wow. Um, I know that my father murdered three people. That's hard for me to say that. I don't Whoa. care that I'm saying it. Well, I you know a giant piece of toe perky yeah. for that one. Yeah, wow, well, so like, Whoa. is he alive today? No. He's, and he's not an angel either. So is he hanging out with Satan? Definitely not. Yeah, he is. <coughs> nice. So, well, like, for him, because he I wanted to know that. Him, so. Yeah, yeah. So, so first thing he did belongs. was install over our fireplace an image of the devil. And I was like, what? When you were little? Yeah, I was six. So you didn't know it was I right mean, or wrong or whatever. I didn't know what it was going on for a long so time. So people would come to the house. So I, just, got, uh, I endured a lot of it. Right. Did you feel like it wasn't right when you were little? Like, yeah. I, yeah. It I felt broke off my father really young. Uh -huh. What about your mother? My mom tried to protect me, but she stayed with my dad till uh, I was a teenager. And uh, she finally left him when he wanted to do, um, he wanted to take acid with all of us kids. He went up, yeah. and I was seven. I can't even imagine. So he had no he had no boundaries. Where did at he all. grow up? What was West Westport, they were New Yorker Westporters. Really? Oh, so he there he was from Connecticut. New York actually. Okay. And then So there. do you know what turned him sour? Or actually I I heard that my grandmother on his side was a witch. So we have witchcraft witches in our family well, and that's, that's a part of it. It's funny because I mean there are good witches. I know. Yeah. yeah. Tons of I know. Them. I to, yeah, you even talk about it in the book, I think, like that if you mm -hmm. want to do yep. stuff like that it's just have good intentions. To, exactly. Very yeah. positive stuff to So you totally believe in all that. that. I not only believe that I've witnessed. It. Right. Yeah. I, I've always, always, my whole entire life, even when I got no idea why it was going on or what was going on and why. Did you brothers and sisters? sisters? Yeah, I'm the oldest of four. And where are they? They live in Connecticut, except my brothers in Seattle. And do you get along with them? I, we, none of my family talks to me. I think they're afraid because they don't want me to talk about what happened. Some of my family was involved in that stuff. And they still might be? or um, I know my sister is and her daughters. Yes. Wow. Yeah. That's wow. Pretty heavy. That's pretty intense. Okay. So then, yeah, well, so then you write this book. Saved. It's almost like purging your, yeah, your saving grace because it's almost the opposite of it. It's, it is. It's, really. it's actually how to really like heal the worst. That makes it even more impressive as a matter of fact. Oh, since thanks. you just came from Really, what would I, would I would describe, you know, as kind of an evil family. Yeah. And, you know, I know they're flesh and blood so, and all of that, but it's just awesome. So, um, where did you take your life? You, you, in the book, it kind of does say a lot of your adventures. You started singing. Yeah, I, I was um, into music since I was young. Um, Jimi Hendrix was a huge influence on me, uh, for singing, and Pete Seeger too. But um, so I started uh, coming into the city. When I was like 15, with our fake IDs, my friends. Right. And we go to all, everywhere we could. I got my fake ID. Oh, no, no. I thought it was Maggie, it was Massachusetts. <laughs> but I was 15 all the yeah. time. Yeah. So I was going to Washington Square Park by the mid 70s. Of course. And then I was playing in Washington Square Park by 79, because I went to Pratt Institute in, oh, and in yeah. Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, grade school, bad neighborhood. Not anymore. No, Everything's a good neighborhood now, exactly. In fact, I got a question. When sure. you played in Washington Square Park, yeah. did you ever know a guy named Joe Budnick? He used to play in Washington Square Park. Park. He used to play in yeah. Washington Square Park down west to sell all the time. But yeah, I know yeah, that. Yeah, he was kind of a mentor to me musically. Cool, but that's when Washington Square Park was Washington mm -hmm. Square Park. Yeah. Now it's like a Hollywood set. It, it looks like, like one to me. It's beautiful. Well, I still go there and play music with some of the people I've known for 30 plus years. Oh, cool, but it's so pretty. Yeah, it's like, so every time I go there, right? I can't believe yes. how nice it looks. It's just not like it Jeez. was. Go at night, though. Oh, it's scuzzy at night? 
Everyone tries to sell you drugs. Oh, they do that again. Smoke, smoke, smoke. smoke. Within like a <laughs> within like a five block radius. Smoke, smoke. Yeah. Oh wow. Take it from these. All right, so it's still happening. I mean, Giuliani land is over. <laughs> exactly. All right, so yes, let's talk about the book. Okay. It's called How to Be Happy No Matter What. And I subtitle Practical Philosophy with a Healthy Dose of Humor. Yeah. Um, and can I get my email if somebody wants Absolutely. to it? Absolutely. It's on Amazon.com under that name. And it's uh, if you want to email me, it's Rebecca Moore Fry zero one at Gmail. It's R E B E C C A M O O R E F R E Y. And and the link of this will be on Ruin Who on Facebook and our website, so you can check it out. Because I'm telling you, I've read the book and it's, it's oh, almost it's really good. It's it's like you could read a little each day. I tried at first because I'm like so. I have to do it now. Like, I tried to read it all, and then I'm, I was like, why? I want to retain it. So I think it's better if you read slowly, because then you just read a little and can and get it in, and then read a little and get it in, and you can read it again. It's like the kind of book that once you finish it, you can just read a little every day, like, round it infinitely, because Thank you'll you always much. get something Thank else from it. But it's that kind of book. It's not a book like a novel. That no. you read from fr front to end and you move on. It has stuff that really you can ingest or whatever, digest. And it's like a pick me up. So if you're not having a very good day, you just read part of that. Even book on a good it. day, you can read it because it just it, give you the it's, energy you need. That's it, what I wanted. But it's really good, and and Thanks. I feel like you know healing. I wish that we didn't need healing, but I don't right. understand why all we do is to try to heal ourselves. Like what the hell happened? <laughs> that humans have to constantly heal themselves. It's terrible. Well, yeah, that's, that's... I'm sorry. No, no. You that's can. part of the point is, like, if you can get yourself on a path where you're doing good and and uh, you can overcome being your true self, self. yeah, then, then your life gets more smoothed out. I mean, I've certainly been through a lot, but my life has smoothed out. Good for you. And, and I am happy. And what are you, you know, doing now? Like what are you doing now? Okay, so I uh, I just started an all-girl band, Flower oh, yeah. Girls. I was going to ask you what you were doing music for that. Yeah, so yeah, I've you. been a musician my whole life. I played in the Village, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be running an open mic in the Village. Really? It's probably going to get Wicked Willies, but it hasn't oh, been. Oh, good, yeah. Wicked I like Willies. Wicked Willies. I yeah. It's a great spot. Yeah. So Bleaker Street. Know there's an open mic there now. Yeah, there will. Hopefully there will be, yeah. Um, cool. and, um, and I still play it. I play Red Wine sometimes and the bitter end, but, um, uh, so that's my music stuff, because I gotta get, I've got like a 500 lyrics, I gotta put, produce them, put them uh, out, and I'm working that out, uh, and I work at Macy's Herald Square, which is a kind of What job. department? I, was, I walked through there yesterday. I'm in Hello Kitty Disney Princess. Oh, wow! Oh, really? I worked I in costume the... jewelry there once. Cool. Yeah, I see that. That was fun. Yeah. yeah. It was I love shopping at Macy's time. I like walking it's really through. Cool store to work at. It is. Mm -hmm. It's really nice now too. They got the flower show on until April second. Uh, yeah, I saw some of the awesome. flowers yesterday. It was like ridiculous. It's like working in a disco kind of. It's really. It's like, do you know any of the people who put out the displays? Oh yeah, I, I know. I'm friends with a lot of the visual team. God, those guys are really wonderful. It's like some, oh, especially at Christmas great. time. Yeah. You know, just well, like, now the flower time is really good too. Yeah. Actually, it's I gotta good. interject about Christmas time. My very first job at Macy's, I, three years in a row, I was an elf in Santa. Oh, wow! Wow! So did you like the movie yeah. Elf? Yes, I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. yeah. And David Sedaris was like the bad Santa. He, I worked with him, and I had to help him, and he was such a pain to the butt. Oh. He was drinking on the job. He wrote oh, just like the movie. Exactly <laughs> like the movie. He was the movie. Is that and the writer, movie. David Sedaris? Who writes yeah, the now he, he became a playwright. A him and his sister well. both. All right, well, today, as like you know, know, is turkey neck day. So <laughs> okay. let's take some tofurkey if you want to oh, wear that's totally fine. Okay. Oh, good. Good for you. And um, do you have any more points that you want to go over real fast? Because you know, um, it's all about time. Okay. So I want you to The proceeds of this book that I wrote are going to a farm. I'm going to start a farm in upstate New York with a dinner theater on it. And have um, I'm going to create a freelancer's foundation from that also to help freelancers in between projects. Good for you. Wow. Like a freelancer's union. 
the free, people that the freelancers need. Yeah, I mean, it won't be a union. Right, right. You're just so everybody wow. like freelancers to help them between their projects. That sounds like That's a great cool. idea. Wow. And they can come up there, hang out, play music, and... Strange yeah, well, ideas. Yeah. You know, and out happens for people who want to live there for free for a summer or something, as long as they're qualified and trustworthy. And, uh, you know, they can just hang on a cool farm and eat really well and, and play music at the theater. And that's this is up in New York? Yeah, I'm hoping, like, just above Woodstock. I have a lot of friends there. up there in Monticello nice. area. Oh, uh, yeah, I just got to have an old growth vineyard and orchard that's part of my requirements. Sounds good. Anything else on the list? Um, just uh, wanted to um, say that, um, well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the show. Sure. I think we actually know a lot of the same people, and um, I've, you know, I've had a lot of celebrity friends, and uh, I could rattle off a list, but I do have a book I'm going to write just specifically about my my funny interactions with celebrity friends called Star Studded Story. So there's more publications coming after this. Good for you. Would you like to push a button? Yeah. Okay. Which one hand, right? You need to be an octopus on this show. Oh, I like that one. There you go. So please, check out the book. And I, I really highly recommend this book. To read every day, a little bit a day. It's like a spoonful of sugar. It will make your life better. It definitely will. So let's give it up for Re Rebecca Moore Fry, Lance's distant relative. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for coming back. We got more on this April Fool's March 30th day. Well, so away. stay tuned. I'm sick again. I have the disease, the disease of men. <laughs>